Now, it's given us rise to another solution which we've got for business. Uh, we've got for business customers. We did some analysis of some customers around the world, um, uh, mainly corporate or small small business customers, and we analysed them in North America and Europe and in Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. And we asked them two questions. We said, first of all, you know, uh, with your IT help desk, you know. How much does it cost you to run an IT help desk? Like if someone calls in, what does it cost? You know, to have someone sitting there waiting for the call and solve the call and stuff like that, and how long it takes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We roughly figured it out. It was about thirty to fifty dollars US every time you call the help desk. Mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, well, what's the number one call generator in terms of help desks? Mm -hmm. And it came back to about fifty or sixty percent of cases was people have forgotten their password. I've lost my smart card. I can't remember what password is. My password's changed. I don't know what it is. Can you please come over here and reset it? Which is normally pretty painful for an IT professional to do that. So we thought, well, how about we have a look at how this works and decide to help people not to, or you know, help people to do something if they've forgotten their password. So we came up with a solution called HP Spare. If I touch this machine like this, mm. it'll go through its big process. Okay, so it goes up, starts loading the BIOS, and then it comes and tells me, can you please enter your password? Okay, now let's just say I've forgotten my, my pre-boot password. I'll put it in, JJ. Ah, wrong. I'll do it again. Okay, I'll do it a third time. And then it does something very smart. Just in case your keyboard is broken, spoiled, or whatever and stuff like that, it allows you to go through and, and tap in using the graphic user interface within the BIOS so you can actually tap in what password you want to put into this machine. Okay, so we tap in, again wrong, and it opens up this thing called HP Spare Key. Now when I took control of this machine at the start and put in my Windows password and stuff like that, I could actually set up the spare key to where I pick three questions out of a list of ten. And they're personal questions like uh, mother's maiden name, uh, your first name's pet, what's the name of your first, um, uh, the school you went to, where were you born, all that sort of stuff. So if you press F7, it'll ask you the first, what's your mother's maiden name? Okay. Okay. Your first employer? Compact. <laughs> uh, well, no, it was HP, actually. I'm one of the few. Okay. And uh, Spike is my pet and then allow me to boot through to the system. When it eventually allows you to get through and stuff like that, it'll actually give you a menu to recover your password. So it'll say, well, you seem to have a problem with your last time. Do you want me to reset the password for you because you've forgotten it? Or do you want me to reset your... Po say, for example, um, I had a... Um, uh, I had a... A smart card and I misplaced the smart card. Spare key will allow you in and then you can change your security policy to use another form of security other than using the smart card if you no longer can find it. And or you can just leave it the way it is. So that's just two little features, mainly built off the HP BIOS uh, that uh, to make the product more secure as well as easy to use with quick look. Too. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, so I saw something about it. I saw a glimpse of the encryption just now. So, the, yes. so the BIOS is the one that does the drive encryption as well. Uh, no, that's a software encryption. The software. Uh, we have a, a the S series across all the machines has the ability of doing software encryption. Okay. Um, it's based on a software algorithm. Okay. We uh, work with a company called Safeboot, which is now part of McAfee and um, they provide us with full software disk encryption, which you get available for free from HP. Okay. One of the nice things about the software volume encryption we've got is, despite what people may think of the industry, the actual performance difference between that and a hardware or a hard drive encryption is only about 2 or 3 percent, so it's not noticeable. Plus you don't pay extra, plus you can use it on any hard drive. Mm. Any hard drive. There's one last um, uh, security uh, element that uh, is built into the machine. Um, is we do have um, file sanitizer that's built into all of these machines. Um, in 2006, we launched a, a disk sanitizer solution, which is mainly designed to get rid of machines at the end. So if you want to get rid of a machine, give it to someone else, you can sanitize the entire hard drive, make sure there's no data on there, because we all know that if you delete files or format hard drives, the data is actually physically still there. It only goes away when it's overwritten. So we had a disk sanitizer, but the problem with the disk sanitizer is once you actually turn it on, that's it, the whole hard drive's gonna get sanitized and there was nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. right? 
most people we know or we've been speaking about saying actually we don't want to just get rid of the hard drive we just want to get rid of certain files mm -hmm. or we want to do bleaching of the hard drive so we've developed file sanitizer what file sanitizer does is that it allows you to pick files and then it will not only delete the file but it will go through and scrub the part of the hard drive where that file was. Mm -hmm. And you can set the level, you can either check it to scrub one cycle or three or seven, up to seven cycles. Okay. You can even do a thing called bleaching, which means that every now and then you can say, right, all the empty parts of my hard drive which don't have files in it, I want you to sanitize that. Mm -hmm. So I can, you know, maybe I can't remember the name of the file and stuff like that, but I want to make sure that there's no uh, ghost files in there, no, mm -hmm. you know, people's records and stuff like that. I want to make sure that the only files that are on there are the ones that I know of and that mm -hmm. I've set up and not ones that I thought I'd delete in. So, Nice little feature we've added into all the uh, the S series products: file and disk sanitizer. For, for file sanitizer, let's say I have ten files on my computer that I want to delete, but yes. I've, I've, I've really deleted another ten. So I'll, I'll will I only sanitize this ten that I currently have, or I'll delete and sanitize? Or you will also pick up ten files that I deleted before. Okay, delete or sanitize. Deleted. So now now I want to hang from this someone else. I've deleted probably let's say a hundred files before. And you don't and you don't know whether they're know where okay, they're right. they're See there's two ways you can handle that. The first way to handle that is to go to the menu and do uh, uh, the boot time and sanitize the hard drive. But when you do that, the operating system that's done is toast and you have to then re re read image the machine. Or you can use file sanitizer, go to the menu and select bleach bleach my hard drive, which means it goes through and has looked at your file allocation table, right. puts all the files which are okay and puts them to one side and says, so, right, anything else, I'm going to sanitise. And it sanitises, it just basically scorched earth policy, it basically goes around and gets rid of everything. Mm. So that way you, you can find that even if you've deleted many thousands of files, mm. it will, you can be sure that none of that data will be resident on that hard drive. So in the, in the bleaching, I have a safe list. White, white this, and then, and then the rest all is gone. So. Yeah, that's right. So the bleaching it, it'll only, it'll only, it'll only bleach those stuff, those parts of the hard drive which are not allocated to a file name. Okay, cool. Cool stuff. Thanks so much. All right, thank you.